In this video, we'll learn how to draw Lewis dot structures for uh, molecules that have atoms uh, with expanded octets. That means that uh, uh, there's atoms with more than eight electrons. All right, so um, something common about those structures with uh, expanded octets is that uh, the atoms belong uh, to the third row or lower, right? So we will never find expanded octets in uh, molecules with atoms or in atoms uh, in the second row, so bottom from uh, to fluorine. Okay, however, when we start to uh, look at some of the molecules that appear in nature uh, uh, from the, uh, with atoms on the third row and lower, we see that occasionally uh, uh, there are structures with more than eight electrons in the, uh, around them. All right, so let's actually do the example of uh, sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, uh, let's count electrons. That is that fluorine has seven electrons in the balance, so there's a total of 42 from um, the fluorines, and then sulfur has six electrons in the balance, so 42 and 6, 6 is 48 total balance electrons. Okay, we draw the structure, sulfur at the center, and then um, uh, fluorine atoms, we have six of them. Okay, so we can draw them like this. And then uh, discount electrons from the single bonds, right? So we have two electrons for each one of the six bonds, that is a total of 12 electrons. That means that we have 36 electrons left over uh, uh, to place as lone pairs in uh, this molecule. Right, so uh, we will put the lone pairs around the fluorine atoms first, and there is something interesting that will happen is that we can put six electrons around each fluorine atom, and because we have six fluorine atoms, we'll have a total of 36 electrons. That, mean that, that means that after putting uh, lone pairs, we will actually uh, be completely done with our balanced electrons. Okay, so that is six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Now we check uh, and see if we have octets uh, around each one of the atoms. And uh, clearly for the fluorines, we have octets, right? So 2, 4, 6, and 8. But when we take a look at the sulfur atom, uh, you have uh, clearly more than an octet. You actually have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right? Uh, 12 electrons around the sulfur atom, that's a clear violation of the octet rule. Uh, but this is a molecule that exists in nature, All right? So we, know, we, we, we can say right away that sulfur can expand the octet, and this is uh, uh, something that is not unreasonable. Now, the question is, well, why is it that sulfur and atoms in the third row and below, how can those uh, have expanded octets? Uh, well, the explanation actually had to wait for uh, the concept of electronic configuration uh, that came up after quantum theory uh, uh, emerged. And that is the idea that uh, once you get into the third row, for these elements right here, and notice that uh, you have a set of 3D orbitals that are very close in energy uh, to the three Ps that you're working with uh, right here. And then uh, it's quite possible that those extra electrons uh, that you actually have beyond the octet, right, so the 10 and the 12, can actually be accommodated in these empty uh, D orbitals that are close in energy uh, to the ones that should be full. All right, and that's why you can have this expanded octet. That is that that would be exactly the same if you go one uh, lower in uh, uh, in the row, right? So that you have here selenium. But in principle, that seems that uh, you could have something like that. But in that case, you would have that empty for the orbitals uh, would be uh, uh, utilized to uh, fill those um, uh, uh, to have the expanded octet, right? Uh, right, great. So, uh, notice that that would also mean that atoms in the second row actually could never uh, have expanded octets, and that's simply for, uh, for the reason for that is that, well, oxygen, right, uh, the analogous molecule with oxygen actually does not exist, right? So, oxygen hexafluoride is not a molecule that exists in nature, and the reason uh, is that, well, uh, the 3D orbitals, right, there's, there's no block of 2D orbitals. Uh, the 3D orbitals are the first empty orbitals that you could uh, imagine playing with, of the D block, but the difference in energy is going to be uh, much much greater than with sulfur, right? That is a 2P4, that is a 3P4, so 3P and 3D are close in energy, 2P and 3D are not nearly as close, so, so that uh, engagement of the empty D orbitals is just not going to be possible for second row uh, uh, atoms. All right, let's do one more example uh, to see more expanded octets, and that is going to be the molecule chlorine trifluoride. Right, so let's count here electrons. Uh, we have seven from fluorine, seven from uh, chlorine. That is a total of uh, 28 
electrons, withdraw the molecule, Cl is central, then fluorine, fluorine, and fluorine. And then we have here that uh, uh, those uh, six electrons mean that we have 22 electrons left. And then we can place here uh, these lone pairs. Those are 18. Uh, that means that we still have four electrons left over. And then we can place them uh, to here and then to there. Well, when we try to look at the uh, octets uh, right here, we actually see that um, the fluorine atoms have octets. But then the uh, chlorine atom actually has a dected, 10 electrons, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10. All right, so that is an expanded octet for chlorine, and that is fine because chlorine uh, is in the third row below, so it can engage the empty the orbitals that are close in energy. Okay, uh, one of the questions that we could ask ourselves is well, what happens uh, if, uh, uh, or could we, could, could we say that would this be a reasonable structure in which you just place? Uh, uh, maybe that lone pair is a double bond, perhaps, or something like that, right? So uh, notice that in this case you would have actually a violation of the fluorine uh, octet, and that can happen because fluorine does not belong to the third rail or below. Um, and that means that you can't engage the orbitals, you cannot have an expanded octet. So that is not a reasonable Lewis dot structure. Okay, one final uh, advice when uh, drawing Lewis dot structures is that when you have various atoms in the molecule, that can have expanded octets. Okay, uh, usually the atom uh, that has the expanded octet, if you have a choice, will be the central atom, much as what you have right here. Okay, you can imagine a molecule like uh, chlorine uh, tribromide, okay, which would have a structure like this, right? In which, uh, well, uh, bromine now is in the fourth row, so you could have expanded octets. So the question is, well, am I going to have the expanded octet in the bromine? Uh, or uh, in the chlorine. And it turns out that it's the central atom, generally the one that accommodates the extra electrons to expand the octet. The terminal atoms uh, are unlikely to form expanded octets. Okay, so in this video, we actually have uh, drawn Lewis dot structures for uh, molecules in which some atoms uh, uh, can have expanded octets.